Hey guys, in this video, the brilliant Mr. B is going to be working through lots of examples, questions based on inverse proportion. Now, this is something that comes up in math and comes up in science, so it's really worth making sure you know this well. There are 15 different questions at three different levels, and if you want to jump between the levels, then the pinned comment down below will take you to the timestamps. If you want more practice questions, then there are loads, loads more waiting for you over my website. last video we looked at direct proportion and if you have direct proportion then what you're saying is that x is directly proportional to y. Now in this video we're going to look at inverse proportion and in inverse proportion x is inversely proportional to y. We show inversely by having a 1 over the y. So we write the y as a fraction with a numerator of one. Now we work this out in the same way that we worked out direct proportion. So when we have x is directly proportional to y, then we would have x equals y. But because this is inverse proportion, then we want the 1 over y. However, um, when we had direct proportion, we had something like ky, we had a constant that was multiplying the number. So the constant in this case is going to go as the numerator of the fraction. So when x is inversely proportional to y, our equation will be x equals ky. So we can substitute in the x equals 7 and the y equals 6. So this would read 7 equals k divided by 6. And then we want to find out what k is. So we can use our solving equation skills. We can multiply both sides by 6. 7 times 6 will give us 42. So k is 42. Now we can write out the equation properly. We found out what that constant is, that number that connects the x and the y together. Now for the follow-up question, we want to know what x is when y equals 2. So we just substitute and turn y into a 2. So that would give us x equals 42 over 2. And 42 divided by 2 is 21. So we've got quite a bit of work here. Let's write down the answer again underneath the question. x is equal to 21. Let's try the same thing with question 2. So x is going to be equal to k over y. So let's substitute in 6 and 8. So x is 6, y is equal to 8, and that is over k. Then we want to get k on its own. So let's multiply both sides by 8. 6 times 8 is going to give us 48. So k is 48. That means we can write the equation out properly. So x is equal to 48 over y. So the values of x and y can change, but that 48 is always going to be a 48. And then we have a follow-up question where y equals. So let's substitute in for, for y. So that will give us x equals 48 over 4. And 48 divided by 4 would give us 12. Let's write that final answer nice and clear. X equals 12. Question 3 starts off the same way. So we're going to substitute in 24 and 4 into our equation. So we would have x equals 24. We have k, the constant. We want to work out what k is. So to get it on its own, it's been divided by 4. So we're going to multiply both sides by 4. And that will give us 96. 24 times 4 is 96. Then we can write out our equation properly. So x is going to be equal to 96 over y. Now this time the follow-up question has given us x as a clue and we're looking for y. So we substitute in x, it'll give us 6 equals 96 divided by y. So we want to think, what can I divide 96 by to get 6? And that answer will be y. Now, a good way to do this would be to do 96 divided by 6, and that would give you 16. So let's double check, 96 divided by 16, would this give us 6? And we use a calculator for this, and we do get 16. So let's write down our answer, y equals 16. New vision 4. So we want to write down x equals k over y. So x is 5. And then we'd have k over and y. If we want to find out what k is, then 
we've got to multiply it by 56 to do the opposite of the divide by 56. So 56 times 5 is going to give us 284k. We're getting into larger numbers now. So our formula would be x equals 280 over y. Now in the follow-up question, x is 40, so that will give us 40 equals 280 divided by y. So to figure out what y is going to be, I'm going to do 280 divided by 40, and that gives me 7. So y would be 7. Always worth a check to see if that's correct. Would 280 divided by 7 give you 40? And that should work. So y equals 7. Now let's do the same thing with question 5. So we're going to substitute in 48 for x. We're going to substitute in 3 for y. And so we're going to have to multiply by 3 to get k on its own. So 48 times 3 is going to give us 144. So now we can write out our equation x equals 144 over y and we're being told that y is 24 and we want to find out what x is. So we can substitute that in x equals 144 divided by 24. Again something we can work out on a calculator. 144 divided by 24 should give us 6. So x is equal to 6. Again, you see we've gone from finding what y is back to finding what x is. So you could be asked either one, either to find x or to find y, and to a slightly different method to work out both versions. Now, moving on to the medium questions, sometimes you just have to find the equation. We've already looked at that this is going to be x equals k over y, when x is inversely proportional to y. So let's try this on question one. We can two clues which we will substitute in. So x is 7 and y is 3. And we want to find out what k is first. So k is to be divided by 3. So we need to multiply by 3. 7 times 3 is 21. So we'll write down our final equation. We're going to substitute in the 21 for k and that'll give us x equals 21 over y. Now it's important to note here that x and y are not going to be 7 and 3 again because those are only true for those values. x and y can take any values as long as they are connected by having that 21 involved in the equation. So the only thing that stays constant is the k, the 21. Now again so far this is as easy as the easy questions, we don't have the extra bit on the end. So what's different about the medium questions? Well, looking at question two, we now have x is inversely proportional to y squared. So we need to add in a squared sign on the y in our calculation, if you have a look at the key there. So when we substitute in, x is 21, we have the k as usual, and then we have a 3 for y, but that is squared, so it's going to be 3 squared, which we can work out. And that will give us 21 equals k over 9. 3 squared is 3 times 3, which is 9. So now we need to multiply both sides by 9 to get k on its own. And that is going to give us 189. So now when we write down the equation, it's going to be x equals... 189 and it's over y squared. It's very important to put the squared signs in if you have those in the relationship at the start. Moving on to question three, we have a similar situation, but rather than having a y squared, we have a y cubed. So in our equation, I'm going to add in a cubed symbol. So looking at question three, we have x is 12. So I'm going to substitute in 12 for the x. We have the k and then y is 2. This time it is going to, and we can work out at 2 to the power of 3, 2 cubed. It is 8. So that would give us 12 equals k over 8. 8. So now we're going to multiply both sides by 8 to get k on its own, and that should get us 96. If you use a calculator for that, you can use a column method, whatever method you like to get that answer. So now we can write out our equation. So it's going to be x equals 96. This time it's over y cubed. It's very important to get the cube symbol in there. Question 4 is going to work the same way. 
it's going to substitute in 16 for x i'm going to substitute in 2 for y k on top and then again this is a cubed question so this will give us 16 is equal to k over 8 so we need to do 16 times 8 uh, so k is going to be 128 leading to our equation being x equals 128 over y cubed moving on to the final medium question it's proportional to the square root of y so in my equation i'm just going to write in the square root of y on the bottom and we're going to substitute into that so x is 7 well we're going to have the k over and then y it's the square root of y and we can work out the square root of 36 that is going to give us 6 so 7 is equal to k over 6 and again if k is being divided we have to do the opposite which is multiplying so 7 times 6 which is going to give us 42 for k so in our final equation x equals 42 over and then it's very important this is the square root of y for our final answer so moving on to the hard questions we'll start off creating the equation like with the medium questions and now we have some follow-up questions to do afterwards so with question one we have x is inversely proportional to y squared we we'll substitute it so x is inversely proportional to y squared and 4 squared is 60. So I'm not going to bother writing 4 squared. I know I can work that out in my head straight away. To find out what k is, k is being divided by 16. So do the opposite of divide by 16, which is multiply by 16. And that will give us that k is 80. So now we can write down the equation. x is inversely proportional to y squared with the k being 80. Now for the follow-up question we're being told that y is a2 so x is going to be 80 over now if y is 2, 2 squared would be 4 so I'm skipping that 2 squared step we can work that out in our heads and 80 divided by 4 is 20. Let's write out the answer nice and clear x equals 20. Question 2 starts off the same way, so we're substituting in 32 and 3. So x, which is 32, is inversely proportional to the k over, and then y squared. Now y is 3, so 3 squared would be 9. So we're going to be multiplying the 32 by the 9, and that's going to give us k equals 288. So we can write down the equation x is equal to 288 over y squared and we've been told that x is 18 a follow-up question so we can write 18 is equal to 288 over y squared now to work this out i'll do 288 divided by 18 that gives me 16 we're saying that y squared is equal to 16 Therefore, y must be equal to 4, because the square root of 16 is 4. And we can write out our final answer over here. If you're not sure if the 288 is allowed, then just take a look at your answer and see if it works out. Does 288 divided by 16 get us back to 18? And that should confirm that, that is a correct calculation. Moving on to question 3. Now, x is in doubt. Uh, inversely proportional to y cubed so we need to make sure that we are cubing y question three is x is inversely proportional to y cubed so when we substitute we need to make sure that we are cubing the y value so we would have substituting x first 32 inversely proportional so it would be k over and then we want to substitute in 8 for y but y is being cubed so 8 cubed will be 8 times 8 times 8. I've done that on a calculator and I'm getting 512. So when I want to work out what k is, I could have x equals the cubed. With the green working out, k is being divided by 512. So I have to multiply by 512. So 32 times 512 is going to give us, it's quite a large number, 1,000 or 16,300. And 84 
over y cubed. Now, in the follow-up question, y is 4, so that would give us x equals and uh, 16,384 over y cubed. Now, if y is 4, then y cubed would be 4 times 4 times 4, which would be 64 all together. So on a calculator, I'm going to do 16,384. I'm going to divide it by 64, and that gives us a more reasonable value for x. We've got some quite large numbers here. We've got and 56. So x equals 200. And 56. Now, a little thing to notice here is when we're saying directly proportional, if one number increases, the other number increases. So if x got bigger, then y would get bigger. Now, if you look carefully at the numbers here, you can see that x has got quite a bit bigger from 32 in the clue we had at the start to the 256 we have now. But if you look at y, y has actually got smaller. Y was 8 in our clue, but now Y is 4. So we can see that the X and Y values are not both getting bigger. One is getting bigger and one is getting smaller when you have inverse proportion. Question 4 is another question which is inversely proportional to Y cubed. So we'll follow the same substitution. We're going to substitute in X, which is 256. We're going to have the k over, because it's inverse proportion. And then for the y cubed, y is 2. So 2 cubed, 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. That would give us a value for k, which is 256 times 8, which is 48 for k. Now, going back to our original equation, remember that k is over y cubed and x equal to all of that. Yeah, I'm stepping a few steps here to keep the working out reasonable. So rather than writing k equals 2048, put it directly into the next substitution. So now we want to find out what x is when y is 4. So we need to substitute in y being 4. So to do that, I'm going to copy out the equation again. So x equals 2048. But this time, um, because it's y cubed, then 4 cubed would be 64. And again, I've got a calculation. I could do a calculator to work out what x is. 2048 divided by 64 is going to give us, we can write down our final answer, x is 30. Two. And again, just notice that the x value has decreased, but the y value has increased. So in inverse proportion, the two numbers go in opposite directions. Now, for the final question, it's a little bit different. An x inversely proportional to the square root of y, but we'll substitute as normal. So we have x is 12, we'll have the k over. And then when we're saying square root of y, if y is 16, root of 16 is 4. So we'll skip ahead and write the 4 in. So our equation is going to be x equals. So we want to do... 12 times 4, which is going to give us 48, and that's going to be over the square root of y. Now, we're being asked what x is when y is 64, so we're substituting, and rather than substituting the 64, that whole thing is going to be the square root of 64, and the square root of 64 is 8, so it'll give us x is 48 divided by 8, which is 6, so our final answer is x equals 6. With our first set of values, x has gone smaller, but y has got larger, so they've gone in opposite directions for inverse proportion. Ouch! This is why in some videos I have unexplained scratches.